getting tougher and tougher to not be a cricket. It'll be tougher and tougher to not get the information out. Before I even forget any of this, I'll just go right to it. This will be BTW RLM 269. Uh, although there are not going to be many past casts now uh, with UCY TV getting the word now that UCY TV will be ending its broadcasts. I think it says Friday. And excuse me for not being all connected up with everybody. I wish I could be more, but uh, that hasn't been the case. And so we just kind of listen through uh, the broadcast channel. UCY.TV will be uh, stopping. And uh, Thursday, this Thursday, you'll be here. This broadcast is the last time. And uh, we'll, we'll uh, have to carry on. Those of you that want to follow the broadcast, we'll definitely have to go find us at reallibertymedia.com. And uh, before I move too far from keep going on that, I, I want to make sure that Jules does know I truly appreciate all the effort that she did to carry over and pick up. As the other networks started to fail, she picked up all this on her own, had her own health problems, and now that's becoming the focus. The Running a network is a a, a real interesting thing to do. Uh, the, um, a lot of demands and a lot of things. I've come through a couple of networks that were had different capacities, uh, different automations, and uh, so there's a lot, lot to know. It's just not something that you pick up. But uh, in this case, uh, we're going to have another network going down. And so the word for all the hosts there are going to be um, quieted. I, I hope they all can find places to go. We've had to do this before. I don't necessarily have to do it myself because I'm over at reallibertymedia.com. And for the hosts that are st- still uh, are interested, I believe I heard, uh, and I hadn't talked to Grimner, how unconnected we are for being so connected was one of the concepts in the UCY chat. Was uh, the uh, I think Grimner's offered uh, places for hosts if they there's slots that are available. And I think he said he'll take you take you on and he'll, as he's done for any of, of us already, uh, given you a, uh, gives you a a podcast page, which you hear me call is the blog caster for my page. That's uh, wh- where you where you find the content that I say BTWRLM269 for this broadcast is you put that in a search engine and likely you'll find that page for those content links if you were ever in the future and the and the and the um, you know, the files and the stuff is, is still there. The pages are going to be there. So this is, again, another thing is that the donations have to come to the networks to keep up the archives. Uh, equipment goes down, time, energy. Uh, I'm doing work behind the broadcast all the, at the post. I'm, we're posting stuff up and moving it around. Sometimes you get help, sometimes you don't. There's a lot of work in all this. But you see why it's going to go dark uh, here Friday. And, I, again, thank you, Jules, for all you've done. Just heal yourself up, whatever that is. Heal yourself up. We talk uh, occasionally about that in the chat. So, I know you're cognizant of it all, and I'm sure that you're doing this uh, no other reason than I, I believe you have some more in you, so you want to see that happen. Uh, and so I'm hoping for you. I've always had my thoughts to you, but I don't know, you know, what more can we do than to have our best thoughts to you. I do, again, thank you very much. Uh, I'm sure lots of people appreciate what you've, the effort and the sacrifices you've been making. So go ahead and uh, d- uh, wind down right now and, and get yourself healed up. Uh, for those of you that would like to continue to listen to Behind the Woodshed from UCY, we'll definitely have to go to reallibertymedia.com. You might be able to search us out and find us at Spreaker. I'm also encoding right now to Spreaker, which also then allows us to get over to uh, YouTube, which I then take that file and go to BitChute. So there's a lot of work going on behind the broadcast, after the broadcast, to place it in places. Minds.com, you'll be getting the Spreaker uh, the Spreaker upload, re-upload that I do, the better quality one um, that I can do from here uh, uh, in, in the post uh, production. So there's, lo- again, lots of work. The hosts end have a lot of work in the preparation and uh, typically in a broadcast, in the post. And then the networks are a full-time job. I mean, I don't even know. I came full-time doesn't even cover it. And it has its own, uh, own ball game going with all of that. So, um, Sad to see it, uh, UCY going down, but knowing it's a good cause for the reason. And uh, this shows you the importance of keeping the networks on. Not only is the censorship, the attrition can be terrible. Uh, the the demands are, are fairly fairly strenuous. Uh, and again, freedomsnetwork.com will be going dark on June 20th, 23rd as well, the social network. 
Uh, there's just no don donations that's sufficient to keep it going. Even though there's some people, in particular Grimner, uh, that puts a lot of time to, or has put a lot of time in, to keeping it going and monitoring. It takes a ton of time just keeping up with it. So those of you that are listening, and those of you that have appreciated the content of all the hosts on UCY, or those of us at RLM, and there's a lot of time slots available for those of you hosts looking for a place. Don't hesitate to contact Grimner. Uh, the um, the venues of the what I would consider the truth uh, uh, of getting out are, are limiting themselves. It's just the way it's a, like any other battle. It's like I tell you, it's a war. It's not a joke. It's what's going on. So those of you that can, if you could do, donate to freedomsnetwork.com, at least keep that social network. It's uncensored, folks. It's just absolutely open. Uh, that keeps going until the, the 23rd. You, you see why we'll be going down on Friday. Uh, those hosts, I hope, will find places. Uh, and I heard uh, Charlie. I, just, I don't usually get able to get in too too fast. On I, I wish I could hear Charlie's broadcast. I just my hours are just not quite right. I got the very end uh, where he was even uh, you know as hosts we consider we consider what what is our you know wh- where are we going with this? What's it doing? How is it helping? Is it helping? How much more can we repeat the story over and over again? It's kind of a, that alone is a wearing type of a thing. And I just kind of look past that. I say there's going to be, there's going to be, a, finally one day someone here, one, one, hears the message and, and orients themselves more correctly to, for their life, to, to find it purposeful, to understand the, this nonsense that we're up against, uh, to actually become Put up the first resistance against it, maybe in the first chance, and that's where, where I come along. A long time ago, it's, I've been doing this for, you know, I think it's going on a decade now. Overall, all the broadcasts on all the broadcast network. Hey, hey, just running a just running the playlist on Revolution Broadcasting when uh, Raymond had it, when that went all messed up. I tried to keep that going behind the scenes, just making a playlist of all the the. The regu- the host that stayed for a while, for a year, was a ton of stress. Just trying to keep it up, making it look like it was a normal network. All that, just making a playlist be hourly connected to new content every day. Without all the mechanisms, is a, is a ton of work, just that. So there's a, a whole lot going on that needs to be, needs to be uh, pr- protected, promoted, and helped, donated to. Otherwise, is uh, I've been I've seen it. Why I went to crickets? I know it's not. I know it's maybe boring. Maybe it's funny. Maybe it, maybe it's uh, interesting. Maybe it is on the point. You understand the point. Uh, that that population is going to get larger, and that that's us us not properly responding to what we're up against. Which means your future is going the way the people we I expose to you are there with the plan, which is our problem. They win. And if you like to see where this is going that way, don't stand up. Don't make a noise. Don't even engage. Make Argue with me instead. I mean, this is the whole, I look at people argue with me, and I just have to shake my head. I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to, how to respond. I, I would wish better for you. But I've got my hands full, so I can do all I can. In fact, I just got finished for as quickly as I can come up with an answer uh, on a lot of these problems. How you address a problem where the system itself is the criminal is really not so simple sometimes. And I've take, it took me months to come up with a thing, a response I felt comfortable that addressed the future that I believe they're going to try and bring an evasion. And I finally got that project done. It doesn't mean the project's done. It means that part is done. So on top of that, we do the broadcast. On top of that, I try to bring the tabs, I bring the news, the notice they tell us of what's going on. I don't care around the world. I I can see all elements in in what you're going to do locally. Whether you understand that, whether you appreciate it, whether you see it but don't understand how to get at it, it's all, my, my, my view is you just need to get involved. Just roll your sleeve up and put your hand, uh, in and, and, well, not in the machine, but put your hand in and start to do something. It, it all, it all becomes a, a lot clearer, a lot really, really fast. But the sitting back and waiting for the right amount of information or thinking you t- need to know enough or making excuses, uh, all it t- time goes on, crickets get more, the networks that we need go down. 
for whatever reason. For whatever reason, it's like in this case. How can we? How can we at all challenge Jules on on being healthy? I mean, it's just uh, just what happens in life. Uh, it, soldiers go down in war, folks. In this case, we're losing lo we're losing a whole battalion, if you will. We're losing a whole bunch of hosts uh, in, in in this battle. And so, it, it's y'all that are listening. Fantastic, thank you very much. But it, you do have to figure out somewhere where you can throw in. Somebody has to keep up, step up, volunteer, mentor, attach yourself to someone who's doing something so you can learn the ropes, if you will. Like we can go step back, if you will, step back to the future of guilds and 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 learn learn how to do it that way. It's why I try to tell you: you don't listen really to me. Don't listen to what I'm saying. Go prove out what I'm saying. Go prove out. It takes action. You get it in you. I can guide you. I can. I can knock some of the clutter away for you. I can show you an obscured trail that sits there for you to take if you want to. But you have to tell me that you're you're interested and earnestly interested. I don't think that Jules would have done this on, on UCY had there not been a lot of people that were uh, she felt were worthy to be presented. So there was people doing there. But it takes you know, this combined effort. And everyone doesn't really know each other. It's kind of fascinating how that works. So it's really a, in one way, it's a pheno phenomenon, uh, and uh, it all that starts to slip through our hands if we're not engaging and re-engaging it. Uh, and and then some of these uh, networks themselves, I find it really interesting as well. Uh, one of the networks will not uh, take this content. Uh, I don't see how not taking this content is going to make a cohesive uh, group of people. And there's no reasons. They act that everyone thinks it's just like YouTube that acts in in censorship without reason. No, lots of people now have decided they can deny without reason. They can censor without reason. They can shadow ban without reason. And this is our society now. Now I don't need. I mean, if someone doesn't really like the content, well, that's fine. That's all. Everyone has a decision to make. I understand all that. But to not have a good reason. To not have any reason, uh, just to act as if you're being contrary, just because you can, is really not going to get us down the road of understanding each other and how we can best help each other. And so it's not so simple in, in some regard. In fact, uh, the reason why I keep, I've told you this, looking around at other networks when the Oracle thing, when, when Doug stopped Oracle, uh, you know, I had a lot of decisions to make on, did I want to get back into that broadcasting politics? And I don't. I, that's not my time. That's not me. That I have nothing to, I really don't have anything to do with that. A lot of backstabbing in the background, backbiting goes on uh, around some of this stuff. So it, it's not so simple generally. And so I decided I would just take, and I, again, my whole decisions over the last, certainly over the last 15 years, has been to focus, 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 refine down to what I can do, what I can continue to do. Why I come here every Sunday is because I've worked very hard to, to commit to the to the pro, to address the oppression, and I've committed to do this, and I've set up my scheduling, my life, in order that that can continue to happen. And I've been fortunate that I can do that. But one may one day end. But it requires this refining and this refocusing all the time. How many things I don't do anymore that I. I throw down, I throw away, I don't even uh, engage it that I used to because it becomes so overwhelming. There's the decisions that you make. You continue, there's a host. You come on and you say, am I going to, what am I, like last night I'm having a trouble. What am I putting together for people? My perception is, except for a few of you, there's nobody's listening. listening. And so why would I want to spend my time? I think uh, Clint Richardson said it. Why would I want to spend my time uh, for a couple hundred people when I can get to thousands if I just take my time and spend it somewhere else. And so this this dynamic is always in someone who's attempting uh, to present information. And so there needs to be some reflection, and when there's not, the question starts. So I'm looking last night, what am I going to put on my tabs for today? But my, I mean, my imagination starts to wander. I get all kinds of stuff and ideas that pop up that isn't this broadcast. But if you're not going to listen, then what am I going to say? Again, there's some of you that do, and that's why I keep coming back. It only takes 
one one uh, help somewhere that I, I know. I, I've been involved. I've seen the des- destruction that people in government, by thinking they, they, they are authorita, have done to other people, to know that if I help one of you out of that kind of problem, that that is, that's all it is. And when I see people that don't have that that amount of destruction that they're facing in their life and don't help, it really, I wonder about us as people. When you, when you don't have that pressure and you don't go help, that's, a, that's pretty amazing to me because that's when you're free. I know now that that's when you're free, free to do so. That's when you're really free to do something. You're no threat. There's no threat to you. Your mind is clear. It's partly how I just confine... It's another thing I don't know if people know. I may have said it. Maybe I didn't. I do not engage for myself in a lot of things. doesn't mean I don't do something, but I don't go out and I don't attempt, because of all I know, to bring onto myself a challenge. Because what that does is it binds up your mind about... It becomes now something that you get... It's like you don't want to be your own, your own attorney, if you will. But if I look out for someone at someone and find a problem, I can address that problem in in a neutrality, much more objective. And I've been much better able to do that and move to move great strides. That I know that if you don't have a pressure in your life, but you see a problem, and you don't go to address it, not a problem for you, but just a problem. You're really diminishing what you actually could do when, in the fact of the, of the, of the condition where it's not a jeopardy to you. Every, everyone listening to me, if you don't have a jeopardy to you, but you see a wrong and don't go address it, you're missing two powers right there by not doing that. And so I, I say that, not to condemn you, just to make you think about that. You, you, we can take on possibly a lot of us can take on a little bit extra load I certainly figured it out uh, that I can I told you sometimes I can't do everything but I can do what I can do and then there's a limit and we make that decision too so the hosts uh, not that I talk to anybody uh, the, the hosts uh, you can hear it the frustration you can hear w- what we're talking about you can hear we come every week the, the hosts need a platform, and then they need to continue to speak because they, they, those of us that are doing this, are in the in the trenches, know that part's important. No matter how many want to listen or don't, my utopia would be lots of people listening to what I'm saying, applying what I say, and we go out there as a big army of people doing stuff. Because I, I already I already see how that would overwhelm the system, and I don't mean in any derogatory way. I mean, there's a path to make this thing work a lot more efficiently than it has been. The, the reason why it's not is because some, the occupiers have taken it over. And the occupiers are meant on your destruction. And then they made it look like that was the warm and fuzzy thing, and you said, okay. Instead of looking at the principle behind it and saying, wait a minute, that wasn't supposed to be that way. It literally was not to be that way. That you're there doing that, we have now a two-step problem, we better resolve that now because we were up to the masses to be vigilant in our so-called liberty. And I can address liberty. I say, you know, I kind of avoid the word liberty a bit. But remember, we got this, uh, we can go at the inalienable and unalienable. Where you have a society and you have certain capacities within those, uh, in that society, they're considered civil liberties, not civil rights, civil liberties. And that's proper. It's what you've done for yourselves. It's a bunch of people getting together to do for yourselves. To deny all that's kind of boneheaded to me. I don't. I don't get all that. But but anyway, it doesn't matter. If you're not doing anything anyway, you're not effectual either way. You can complain all you want. It doesn't do anything. Uh, but we have an occupation here, like we have occupations all over the world. And they're bent on your destruction. And they do things, and they get away with it all the time, and they continue to get away with it, and they're going to get more destruction. And this is why I, don't, I even touch some of the stuff that happens uh, around the world. And to me, it's just a big mirror of reflection. If we're, if we're going to be open enough and honest for ourselves, we have to start seeing the, this fractal, if you will, this reflection of the minor to the, mag, the, the, the mini to the macro. The nano to the mac to the mini. It's all this big uh, jump. Uh, it just depends on the on the on the um, scope. But it all has the same methodology. Destruction all comes through the same methods. They've learned well these techniques, and so why change them? 
because they've learned well that you will not interfere with any of it. You will not listen to someone like myself. You will argue with me instead of saying, wait a minute, let me go try what he's saying first. Now maybe my history doesn't show that that would work. Well, maybe I listened wrong. Maybe I need to do something more, a little bit more refined. But if you don't do that and you buy into the defeat, it's done. I mean, I don't know what else to say. It's self-evident right there. But so occupiers occupied, occupiers destroy, and they have their own agenda. They could care less about your laws. They could care about uh, the, less about you. It's like the step beyond anarchy. It's not chaos because they're coming with a plan, which is your problem. See, anarchy is supposed to actually, not the newfangled de definition, it's a group of people inside a system that, that do not agree with parts of that system. And a lot, of, a lot of people I hear are really doing that, but they'll deny it. If you take on anything of this civil society we know as the United States of America or a state, you, you, you're, you're there. I mean, I don't know what else, you can't deny it. You're kind of a hybrid, aren't you? I'm not saying I'm not. I'm saying that's us. And so that's a reality. That's, you start disregarding that, then you start looking a little bit foolish, at least from my perspective. As I've said, you don't, undo, you don't deny an authority that has the power to do something to you outside of your consent. And that should have focused some people on some problems, too, because a lot of this, uh, they just take consent. And we, we use it as a word most of the time, the presumption. That doesn't fill it either, but that's that's as close as I'll get here now. There's a presumption of this stuff. Well, that's not provable. I mean that's rebuttable, so that means it's not it's not definite. They're not ultimately definite. And so there is your issue. But hey, if you don't think this way it doesn't matter. See you you're just uh, you're just gonna rail against the machine, so to speak, and not not realize that we're part of it. That's why we're here deny all the good parts of it, throw the baby out with the bathwater, uh, stand in our self-righteousness, and, and do nothing to stop the occupier. Well, it turns around and shoots the guy next to you in all your disregard, denial, denial that it doesn't happen because, by gosh, uh, we're supposed to be living uh, in peace. And everyone disregarded the fact that no one's living in peace, and it's not going to happen, and that's a reality of this world. I don't know why. It's not. I don't agree with it, but that's the way it is. I can't live peaceful. I don't know why. In all my intention to do so, I can't. Why? Because there's others that don't believe that. There's others that have their own intention. And no belief in my intention to be peaceful is going to stop that. I don't know why, but it's there. We're given indications of that it's going to be there. And we can disregard it if we want. We can just complain and moan and whine about it or we're going to have to take responsibility and start to do something. And that's kind of where I'm at. Because the what, what I see is a reflection, uh, which a lot of people see, but they don't think they make the connection. The consistencies around the world, I don't care what kind of government you call it, those inside the government, the caucusocracy has taken over, and you were required to stop it. I don't care where you were, you were required to stop it. And you didn't. And then you just complained about it. That doesn't do anything, because as we see in the Libra Code, uh, you know them by their deeds. In other words, their their action is what you're dealing with. What they do is what you have to contend with, not what they say. And so when you're just saying, that's the same thing. That's a, it's the same problem for them. They don't have a problem with what you say. So, occupiers kill, occupiers destroy. We're talking one, a reflection that goes on, supported by the United States government over there in the Middle East called Israel. They call them Israelis. I've gone through a definite, a def, to my mind, a very definite proof uh, to distinguish, and I did the distinguishment uh, with the pre-48, uh, post-48. I think that's a pretty good line. In fact, it came up again. While these people in uh, uh, post-48 uh, claim a, a title, uh, they build a wall around the people who have the right to the land uh, they are occupier the 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 people who built the the wall the call it a fence uh, are are without right and then they are an occupier and then they murder people and get away with it underneath the protection and funding of the United States government it proved out i don't know how much Unless this was, well, she's close enough. Uh, this could be, in a way, this doesn't even uh, rise to the level of shooting or killing 
a baby because uh, that's kind of gone by. That's in a memory hole. We don't care anymore that babies get bombed uh, by by these by these occupiers. But in the news, uh, you don't think occupiers are problems. You don't see the destruction around you where you live. I say it's in your town where you live. You may not see it, but that's a blindness. You have no eyes to see. I'm asking you to get those eyes and whether or not you want to take the responsibility to do it and then see it and then take on the responsibility to do something about it. That's on you. I don't know more. You make that decision. You make all those decisions. But we don't continue. We don't stop this thing. It turns out to be where we find out just what happens in the week since the last time I talked. A Palestinian paramedic shot dead by Israeli forces in Gaza. And I say Israeli forces in Gaza. It's the Zionistas, folks. It's not Israelites, and it's not the those that Israel begat. This is a demonstrably political movement that has been foisted on a people in that area. And I say that, and I can point to you in the United States of America, the very same things foisted on every place in the governments now uh, through different imp- in- intentions all end up doing the same uh, outcome, if you will. If you don't really see this, or you don't, you think it's over there, you're missing the big point. It's probably why you don't listen behind the woodshed much. You know better, but you won't do anything more about it. Uh, Palestinian paramedic, she's 21, a female, folks, shot in the back by an Israeli sniper. How and, and, justified, so-called, by these occupiers, cannot be a world that you uh, agree to continue to live in. You think it's happening in the United States any different, or you think it's happening in other countries where the cops, the military, is killing your people? Innocent people? How much more innocent, if you will, in purpose and in and and intention do you get as a female paramedic going to help other people who have been wounded to be murdered and shot in the back? How much of an insult did that used to be in um, Western days to be shot in the back? How much of a scoundrel coward were you to do that to somebody? How much are we agreeing now? It's no longer part of our principles in us. As we, there was some discussion uh, again, an outrage. I don't. I, it's an outrage. I, I hope there's an actionable thing. Lots of st- reports about this uh, this medic that was uh, shot, snipe, snipered. Why? Because she was close to a fence. That was her crime. She was close to a fence. Really, remember, this fence is illegal. It's on land that doesn't belong to the people who built the fence. And that fence is the border of a concentration camp that she wasn't even touching. And they shot her. And they killed her as she was trying to give aid to others and had been giving aid to hundreds of others. And then we hear, and I don't, I couldn't qualify this. It appears, and I don't, and there's been a question to this. So just just hold this out. I want to talk about connecting it up to the United States. It appears, and this, I can't qualify it. What I'm saying is, is this could be fake news as well. But then a report came out that somebody says that a girl from Boston, who joined the Israeli army, was the sniper. And people are cool with that. So if you don't think we're connected to the United States at the hip to Israel anyway, we got people over there pretending to be Israeli army that are sniping people that are on their own land. So I have some links if you want. They went through Twitter. One thing I do want to say this week, and one of my problems presenting the broadcast uh, content, I noticed this week it was very hard to find accurate information, a lot harder than I had ever seen before. And I so I don't know if that's a, a, an alarm that we need to be aware of. Uh, very conditional type statements. Lots of things promoted this this week. Very hard to get through the truth. So I'm gonna like this story about the Bostonian that's uh, the uh, the sniper. Can't I couldn't find verification of it. The problem is with the censorship of the media. There's no other stories to go find out if you don't go there. 
This is another problem with the censorship or the misreporting. Uh, the alternative proofs are hard to come by. This week was the toughest. This is one of those stories that someone called Rebecca from Boston was an IDF soldier, uh, apparently maybe a dual citizen, uh, that went over there to shoot someone that lived on their own land. And we tend to think that's okay because I haven't heard that the Department of Justice is going to go pick, pluck her out and charge her for a cold-blooded murder. But that's another thing. If that's not, uh, if she didn't do that and it was a Facebook fake news, well, I don't know what else to say. My point is, look at then the propaganda that they're stirring up about that. It isn't bad enough, and what are they covering? It isn't bad enough that it is, is the Israelis uh, get covered by this story for what they did as justification. Is that we stop focusing on them as the ocu- lawless, murderous occupier. And this is the thing I'm focused on. Uh, these are not of Israel, the man. These are of a political movement, which I can absolutely attack. It's an idea that's been foisted upon a bunch of people, and now, how much, again, how much more innocent, if you will? See, it's not just innocence here. It's innocent in purpose, innocent intent, innocent, uh, and then, if you will, Samaritan helping that was snuffed, having no actual threat to someone who has no right to be in the place anyway, causing it. And yet we get Nikki Haley over there in the UN actually supporting this stuff. It's got to be the height of of delusion and psychopathy. And if that's what they're going to do at the federal level, that ripples through the system, that ripples through the states, that comes down and through to you, as I've explained to you, your states are not much different than the federal, in particular with the 14th Amendment, if you understand how that works without all the hoopla around it, just how the mechanics of it. You realize there's not much distinction here. What's happening in Israel is happening in your hometown. Innocent people are being destroyed. I don't care where I look in the system. It's people in the system. The government, to me, is an inert framework. Uh, it's, it's, it, you could, it, doesn't ma- it doesn't matter what you call it. It's people inside have not taken license to be the lawless, murderous, destructive occupier in our lives, globally. But Nikki Haley, a representative of the United States government, is totally okay with all this. They made a big deal about, well, the medic was too close to the fence. Now, I responded, with all due respect to the, that point, who of any import cares about the distance to the fence? She could have been leaning on the fence. That wouldn't justify any response, let alone murdering her. Besides, the fence is evidence of a pre-existing high crime against the Palestinians. And you folks in the United States of America don't even understand that the government is doing the very same thing to you on your land. You don't even understand the underlying uh, immunity that's built into this. You will not stand up in your law. You will not present it. You will just agree that there's a right to impose upon you and destroy you around it, giving over questions of whether or not the government can come in and do this to you. And we come under all kinds of excuses about it. But again, to me, it's just a consistent reflection. I'm not... I'm. I don't see it. I don't see a difference. What matter? What does it matter? Any distance inside the co- co- concentration camp fence, any distance, a medic helping other people would give anybody the right to murder somebody. Is what's being allowed to go on? Is what's being allowed to go on in the states when a cop murders someone uh, who would would uh, be assumed? Uh, at least not even presumed now, right? Just assumed to be innocent until proven guilty. Now we've allowed the magic phrases to come over and destroy all of that. It got getting so bad, the criminality, the war crimes are so bad now 
the rest of the nations are really having to take stock in what they're agreeing or not agreeing to. And we're maybe seeing the first bits of the porcel cracking porcelain at the UN level, where this uh, so-called nation states. You see, when they made nation states, they diminished nations. And what you see there, it's like the states of the states of the Union, the United States. They're underneath the District of Columbia. That's what a, a nation is supposed to be sovereign on its own. But what they've done in they created the nation state was to then put it in in un, union with a bunch of other nations, diminishing their nation, national status and sovereignty and furthering the other jurisdiction that they're all part of union of, which is the UN, uh, the UN destruction. So nation states, as they keep saying, are not really the good thing. Uh, it's just nations that have been destroyed. Your nations have been destroyed in preference to this uh, impotent organization which really is just used as a mechanism to continue oppression in the UN and by different means and by different methods again it's multidimensional the United States is isolated at UN vetoes popular resolution and finds no backers for an anti-Hamas bill it is starting to see the epitome of the embarrassment of the world to even agree, to try to agree with what the United States said, while the United States denies recognizing the problems of the genocide and uh, that's going on over there in Gaza by lawless, murderous Zionist Zionistas. They're occupiers. It's a political movement that had been given force and effect by the United States and Britain and funded and protected. The United States attempted to pass the idea that Hamas was the cause of that. And only two people voted with it. The rest two, two people in there representing nations uh, showing that they're not going with it right now. I was happy to see this part. But what an embarrassment Nikki Haley is in promoting this. What an embarrassment upon the nation, the people it's supposed to represent. And then having the gall to turn around and say, because people wanted to go after the real murderer, that somehow that showed the allegiance in the world against justice. It's got to be the height of a delusional mind and a, a psychopathic personality. You might say, well, it doesn't matter. It's in New York in a building talking about some place in the Middle East. Well, that's, that's your government's uh, representation, the one that oppresses you in the United States. It's the same attitude. It's the same one that uses all these legalities and so-called loopholes and so-called uh, legalistic uh, uh, obstructions in order to ke keep you confined and, and keep the pressure down. I, t I told you, you're, the, whole, the whole object of an occupier is to keep the mass of the people from rising up sufficiently to take it out, take out the occupier. That's why they built that fence over there, so-called fence. It's a buffer and a bar barrier because they realized they actually couldn't. Uh, this little, this little murderous band of Zionistas. You're not supposed to interfere with the population if you're an occupier sufficiently to cause them to rise up. And that's a you're watching Gaza as a proof of that. Everything that's taken away, they knew would be used against them as a righteous response to an occupier. What's the problem is, is that it's being funded by an organized criminal syndicate called the United States. That's on the back of the people because that's supposedly in the world represent, be a representative democracy. Uh, we're so dumbed down and so celebritized and so mind controlled as a, as a populace we, we don't see a problem with any of this how bad is it when nobody backs a US resolution at all folks 
how truly bad is it when the United States turns around and says, because you've woke, all your nations voted the other way, we see how you are, and we know that we're the righteous righteous ones, and you're you're an evil. Is really the height the height of insanity, and we're agreeing to all that. So I want to say this one more time. I wrote it out for someone who brought up the idea of the of the diminishing borders of the Palestinian area in favor of the Zionistas. And I want you to hear this because I said it before. I put it in a in a Twitter. I confined this statement down to whatever will fit in a Twitter, which is something that I believe needs to be presented everywhere you talk about this. And it may need, after a while, the conversation, if you ever get there, to be adjusted slightly. But this is where I'm, I'm starting and finishing. There is no borders that are expanding over in Israel by the Zionistas. Those are lawless occupations of land. And I talked to you about how to dissolve this, resolve this down by land and by title right, and even by the biblical style, the biblical, uh, the antecedent authority that they, the Zionists might claim but can't actually grasp or meet, was that I responded to the idea that the borders have been changing to say that the post, the post 48, post 1948 Zionistas, are murderous occupiers having no actual borders. Any state and border claims are fraudulent and deception. Pre-48 Israelites claiming, claiming Judea would be confined to Bethlehem and Southerly. Rest of Palestine going to others Israel begat and by tribal quotation, tribal location, explains the problem of the injection of the cancer post-48 as a political movement on a land that was in historical fashion and understanding already inhabited by a certain tribes of people that came from a man. All these tribes came from a man in history. And the Zionistas of post-48 cannot make the claims to the what Israel begat. And I say begat very in, importantly because when you go look at the source, it has to come from the physical seed of, of, of a man, not from his ideas. And therefore, we find a very fast way to get at the truth of this. And when I go right to there, that little short paragraph I read pretty well lines it up for me. I don't know about you all, but this is my position on this because I'm getting sick and tired of watching the innocents be murdered underneath the collar of authority. You already know, I've explained to you, authority that comes to take out somebody or their rights or their remedies under a color of that authority without actual warrant is a criminal, a felon, multiple felons felonies. By the commission of that act, those acts, and by the omission of doing what the law ought, oh, the law was uh, to guide. When you have lawlessness, they can't come with any warrant at all. Any action is a crime. I don't have to get all wrapped up in the sentiment of it. I look at the principle underlying this. And if you can't see what I just said happening in Israel to the Palestinians, uh, excuse me, in Palestine, by the Zionistas, to the inhabitants called the Palestinians, whether or not you extend it to Israelites, it doesn't really matter to me at this point, when you get to see that a lawless action, depriving people, in this case, let's say the medic of life, they don't have the, this lawlessness doesn't have the right to impose an excuse. When that one lost their life, you just watch the one who did it commit multiple felonies. Is the very same action and, and destruction, I tell you, is the same answer in the United States of America. And, and in any so-called civilized uh, arena, uh, jurisdiction. It'll happen in all countries, if you know what you're looking for. And if I can show you, since I did just show you and explain it, that a unwarranted stolen right, uh, property, liberty, whatever, life, 
is done under the color of an authority is a high crime, the highest. And you don't see that's happening to you in the lands where you live. You're not listening to me. You don't either need intend to listen to me, or you're not intending, or you'll know already that when you listen to me, you're going to have to do something to stop the very thing that's happening over, that I keep telling you is happening over there in Gaza, is happening to you, the open air prison wherever you live. And it's happening by the very fact because you're not doing something. Because I don't know what else. There's another principle in this world that the bad rises to the top very quickly. And if you're not persistent, vigilant, and persistent to keep it down, it rises up. Like a bad weed. The post-48 Zionistas are a murderous occupiers having no borders. Any state and border claims are fraudulent and deception. Pre-48 Israelites claiming Judea would be confined to Bethlehem and Southerly, the rest of Palestine going to the other is others Israel begat and by their tribal location. I've just defined for you ancient Palestine. is not the Israelis, is not the Zionistas. I keep telling you, they lost the T-E-S at the end of that name if they wanted to be legitimate, and then they lost the fact that they would be located south of Jerusalem, not in Jerusalem, for that tribe. And yet, people, as posiers are murdering medics trying to help their own people. And I hear crickets. I hear literal crickets. I can hear them, folks. I know maybe I'm going nuts now. I'm hearing them. I'm hearing the silence. You know, how, how crazy is that? I'm hearing the silence, folks, of our societies who will only go out and just uh, throw a, 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 a sign, some letters on a sign and protest and be gassed and be water tanked, just like the government wants you to. That's all we do. You, again, if you're not seeing the correlation between that innocent, well, in, I mean, on, onerous uh, action by the medic to be snuffed out by someone lawless, and you don't see that correlation in what's going on in your societies, I don't know about y'all. I really don't. It's not that hard to see. In fact, that's what makes you all complain. But, but it's not just something about complaining. It, it, that, that complaint has to be now moved into an action. In other words, I come here and I talk. Yeah, yeah, yak, 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 yak. I can do all the yak and I can do all the typing. For as bad as I do the typing, I can do the typing. We can do yak all the day. But, you know, when I get it back around on Monday, I have to open up all my... Look at my uh, my projects. I have to start pulling them down. I have to start going to work on those projects, and hopefully, in a very short time, I've got something in the real world that is going to be an action from that work. That's going to make a difference somewhere, somehow. However small the step is that's being made forward to to correct a wrong, until the next Sunday comes, and I'm back here yakking. In other words, there's a whole lot of days working and an indulgence of only a few hours yakking that actually gets things done in the world. I mean, I just I listen to, I just, li just think about this medic being sniped and then watch the excuses and the support and the funding the United States gives to all that. I don't even know if I, again, what do you call that? What's the adjective for this this sort of this crime, this evil? And why are we tolerant uh, tolerant of it? Why do we accept? Why are we so accepting? And why are we susceptible to accept these kinds of things? Is Again, I keep thinking about this, the protocols of the elders of Zion. But that's the basic the basics of a human, if you will, your your nature developed for you in print. It's your operation manual of 
those that want to exploit you are the techniques that allow us to be exploited and are the reasons probably why we're not, and I say probably because I don't know of all the reasons, why we don't truly respond correctly. In fact, I think the, the, intel, the true intelligence is exposed through something. It's a transparent condition. Those that might argue with someone might like me, either like with me or like me, or just have a, not necessarily a direct argument, but an indirect uh, argument. No, you can't engage what I'm saying because you are also intelligent and you know that to do that would require your action. It is probably a deeper failure. Then all I can ask you is to rethink that position and throw that down in you and move forward into the new, a, a new position of taking responsibility. That there's going to be a local medic near you that goes down. You can, even innocent people, just innocent people. It doesn't have to be the what society of views as someone doing honorable things, caring for other people that gets taken down. Anyone who's innocent that has no evil intent, or has not even evil intent, just a wrong intent. Even someone making an accident doesn't deserve uh, to die. Doesn't deserve to be put in, in, a, dis, in a condition of destruction. Doesn't be put, uh, put into a condition where they're taken advantage of by the system and exploited, rendered by the machine. Like so much hamburger. Human resource. You know, everyone wants to say, oh, well, it's a natural resource. Well, you're a natural resource when you're a human resource. You're probably the most valuable one to those that would exploit you. That's why they gave you that title. And you didn't think nothing of it. In fact, you go down to work, you go right to the HR department, don't you? Now, everybody at Google had this big old problem with the drones for military purposes, but they'll go down to the HR and, and, and agree that they're these little animal slaves working for this fiction for what it wants, and it wants its bottom line. That's it. Why do we do that to ourselves? I'm just I'm so far off of my tabs, I don't even know. But human resource, and uh, how they get it, how they get you tied into a fictional system, and the fee, we know about the fiat system and all this, and I'm trying to warn you off of the next one coming. I've told you it's already a debt system. It's this uh, blockchain technology applied to currency uh, officially. It's another servitude. It's another way of your destruction. And everyone will talk about gold and silver coin, but no one will actually really get down to doing anything with it. No, I can't do that. It's too much trouble. It's so much easier to do it, to, to plug in and just uh, make excuses. Uh, I guess it's not going to be easy. The war wars are not easy. Victory is not easy. Obviously, maintenance of your peace was not easy either, and they stole it from you. To the point that a country will support another tool called the Zionistas to go murder innocent people. And nobody but a bunch of people going, ah, oh, that's no good, it's a war crime, will do anything more about it. Not recognizing their own governments do that to them. What I keep telling you about, you think it's over there, you're living it. You're living it in it, however slightly it's different, so that you're accepting of it. That's the occupier. Uh, keeping you, keeping the pressure up so that you don't pay attention. It's what, that boiling frog syndrome we've been told? The raising the water up just up. They keep it just enough that you don't die. And you eventually start thinking it's comfortable. How they have us all worked out. And so this next iteration going into finance is another control grid, another occupier occupation on your life. And I'm not talking occupations uh, like going to work because those occupations are permitted and licensed too, aren't they? Right? Until you find out about land law. Then there's occupations of the land. They're not, they're not permittable. They're not licensable. They're grants. And when you finally understand the distinction when I'm talking about there, you might the light might just go on for you all. But we'll see. It seems to, periodically, people start getting it. There's a distinction. There's a subtlety that uh, is missed by, I think, everybody. It's why I come at this different. I seem to come at it different. It's why people don't understand me, I think, if they don't understand me. If that's not a telltale thing to keep responsibility from everybody. 
there's a subtlety being missed by a lot of people, and I'm not, I'm just sad it isn't being seen and being worked with. And once you see it, those of uh, those of that I talk with and show, and, and they finally get it, they realize what it is. It's kind of interesting because we all of a sudden get real quiet. Now we have a we get real contemplative, and we start really realizing what's up. I always find that pretty fascinating. All of a sudden, we find out we don't know so much, but we do have to know something, and it has to be the right thing, and it has to be applied right. We just don't even have we don't have to have any more conversation. That's why all the yak yak and continued yak yak is just kind of like a turn off anymore. I'd certainly like to do some more wonderful things and discuss things that way, but that's not seemingly the fact of what we need to be doing. And we're being brought into and drug into another one. We're told it was coming long, long time ago. I was told when I was a kid this was coming. I couldn't I told you I couldn't imagine how it was happening. How can this be? How can you have a cashless society that's worldwide? How do you even do that? I'm so unaware, uh, actually. I'm just a little guy that just goes through the world having a great time. Thought I was having a great time, but that's what they wanted us to believe. And then we got us into, you're having a miserable time, but you're you're nice with the miserable time because it's not as miserable as the guy next to you. How's that one? And then there's so many miserable people, oh, we're just in the same boat. We'll make it better. Nobody takes, lifts a finger to do a dang thing about it, but that's okay. We'll make it. We got lots of words. So anyway, going into this uh, financial destruction, and this, this control grid that apparently people don't recognize, it's in this blockchain technology. And like I said, it's a way, there, I believe I see a way um, that it can be used as a tool for good, and yet the one, the cockistocracy uses it as a tool for them. See, it's not bad from their perspective, it's good for them, but from us, we it's pretty evil. Uh, but an interesting uh, thing's popped up again about uh, the occupy occupier telling you uh, in a side way uh, advertising what's on the horizon and you have to understand that this is almost like fiction I don't mean like the fiction like a straw man or the fiction like a state I'm talking like a novel this is, comes out to you like a like a, a movie it comes to you like science fiction it comes to you like some novel some some story uh, all the characters can change in all this. But it's a story that drops a seed. It plants a seed or gives you the notice. It came up here pretty interestingly through Twitter. Uh, uh, got a link uh, from uh, Catherine Austin Fitz. I think we talked about her last week. Uh, the Deep State Wet Dream presents its, quote, revolutionary anonymous self. It was a link to an article from uh, Blockchainist. And it was a discussion about something in the, well, the a state, the United States of Bitcoin, if I remember correctly. And I'm, I apologize here, I, I don't have that link. Uh, so I'm going to have to do it from memory. Uh, the, but here it is, it's just, it just would be a tab for me anyway. Uh, the United States of Bitcoin, located in... They talk about integration with the system, all going through this little utopian idea using blockchain technology, the United States of Bitcoin. And if you look very carefully at this little story, this little intention, as Catherine Offen Fitz says, this is the revolutionary uh, anonymous self telling you. This is what's in control, and this is what's happening, and this is what's going on. And I'm telling you, don't look at it literally, look at it principally uh, they're telling us in this uh, little little statement uh, this little story how it's laying out how this is coming through and the more the better the ones that you view to discern you'll learn, you'll see the steps and the nesting of how this all works you'll see the trusting the trusts that are set up you'll see the surrogates that are set up in how this story is written which brings to me Catherine Austin Fitz's interpretation that it, this is the the disclosure And as I tell you, you can't forget about the name Bitcoin. It's the blockchain. Is the same. It doesn't matter what the name is. It's the technology, the principle underlying how the technology will work. It's the principle underlying the steps that are being taken in order to do this. This report explains a scenario by which you will have your utopia, 
as the so-called deep state. I don't think it's deep state, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it's a name. It's just a, just a thing. A, a, it's a title. It's just a bunch of a couple words. But your deep state sits there to explain what's happening. It's there for you to see that Catherine Austin Fitz identifies. The so-called, quote, revolutionary, it's not revolutionary to those that are, the, that are the planners. This is the execution of the plan. And they tell you, they tell us everything. This story, this little idea, this utopian idea notion being written about, could that, could, you can see inside its discussion, and it's detailed enough in certain aspects to say, yeah, this is the this is the notice to us of how it's rolling out, and it's uh, I'm just telling you, it's confirming more and more what I've been telling you about the problem of the dark side of so-called Bitcoin. It's the caucusocracy using it against you. It's the technology they use and they attach the the utility to that technology. To me, it's just it seems to simply it's a digital ledger, folks. But it's a digital ledger that has a so-called intelligence that can work with data. And then there you're going to find out they're going to take all these separate blockchain subject matters and they'll tie it into like a master blockchain in every aspect of your life. And we heard about that last week when I talked about the China condition and your social credit. It's social debt. But before I move over to there to remind you about that one, you have this so-called revolutionary anonymous self is letting you know that this Bitcoin stuff is for real, and we're bringing this on. We're going to call it Utopia, United States of Bitcoin. We're going to give the idea. We're going to drop the seed, and let's see how this takes off while we're getting very close to implementing it all over the place, all over the world. And then this report comes, or this little story off of Zero Hedge comes up, which I always find interesting. I don't know why they just... To me, I see him coming in batches of, of notice to us. Uh, Ethereum creator asks, and I don't. I was thinking, why is an Ethereum creative creator even going to ask this question? But here it is. Ethereum creator asks, do Rothschilds control cryptocurrencies? What I found interesting is this cryptocurrency dude decides. The old money elite have no control of this place. And that will charge ahead independent of the Rothschild dynasty, if you will. J just upon the holdings of the Rothschild family around the globe, I'd say the guy, I, 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 I have a hard time not thinking the guy's um, a bit myopic. A bit. When I exposed to you weeks and weeks ago, Bet well, maybe months now. Time has been really flying against this, uh, me and all this. But uh, that the bit, the blockchain is attaching itself to debt, and recognized as such in the IRS doing so. And I hear this question; it's completely um, uninformed. But Ethereum came up at an interesting time. And uh, it came up as, con as a contract inclusion for bit for blockchain that I I could see was a serious threat given all of the con the so-called contracts that you're involved in you know in the government it, with government uh, that this is not an inc uh, inconsequential question at this time because he's dismissing dismissing the connection which makes puts most people's mind at rest that it can't happen because he says so. What I found interesting, though, beyond all this, because a lot of it is conjecture and rhetoric anyway, just talking. We don't know. I don't know how they're... I just see the connections. I see they're already connecting up the system that the Rothschilds control. It's already being connected up. But what was interesting was what the it said, what it's reported the Rothschilds are doing how minuscule they are in this. Remember, cryptocurrency is not the world. It's this very minuscule piece of the whole monetary fiscal thing in the world. This is my this is infinitesimal thing. And it's been given such a great sway uh, 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 and, and control. 
that oh the Rothschilds have to be involved or not or so they're so small compared to it. No, no, no. These are a false setup. But let's get to the point about this. I told you relative to blockchain that there's a good side, if you will, and the bad side, if you will. I mean, it's good for the bad if that's what they're doing. But for us, it could have a utility. But I said for it to be better before you can even really in, be beyond speculation and, 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 and wagering the gambling part of it, you'd have to do a couple of things. And one I told you was make it private, absolutely privatize it. Keep it away from that system attempting to attach itself. And the other thing I've told you, and I reference this to the cannabis coins, and if you're interested in all those, contact Grimner. I'd see him, he's, he's really into all that stuff. I wish I had more time to be interested. I, I think it's kind of cool. But you would have to tie it to, and I use cannabis because it's obvious. It's a product. It's a production-oriented landed condition. It's it's based in the production of the land. Why do I look at that? Because that's where this land disposal law is all based. And why do I say that? That is because it's an asset. It's an actual wealth, not debt. It, it, it can't be commingled. That's what I've told you before. Would begin to set up a blockchain technology that was more substantial and more impervious, and nothing's impervious, but more impervious to this organized criminal syndicate called government. And then you would have to nest that inside of private contracts that can't be imposed and all this other stuff. You'd have to have a knowledge of the of the environment that you're in in order to nest this technology that I think has a way to go to privatize it. But again, not as an end-all, be-all, just as another tool to make things literally more efficient for us and maybe less costly, although that's not seemingly to be the, the key either. That's the excuse the government's running versus printing coin, but or minting coin, but it ends up not being true in some regard. But getting over to the point, what what did they redo? What did this guy talk about? First, he dismisses the Rothschild. He dismisses that they have any control of the of the debt system. Dismisses that blockchain's connecting up to that in in so many different ways. Uh, but what do they say in this report about what the uh, Rothschild's connection could be? I found fascinating. Reports about IMMO first surfaced in local cryptocurrencies industry press last week. What was that IMMO? Darn it. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I didn't. I don't have it right up here. But um, it's an opaque. They describe it. Listen carefully. They describe it as an opaque IMMO blockchain project that the so-called banking dynasty is reportedly investing in. So what are the Rothschilds looking at? Not Bitcoin. Not necessarily Ethereum. Since I don't know what's inside IMMO project, I'm just saying they're not doing the public stuff. The, con the consumer stuff. No, they're looking very particularly at an opaque blockchain, a private blockchain. That was so. What's the other thing that they point out about in this article? Trying to dismiss the control that the Rothschilds may or may not have. They're saying that this opaque project is leaking out information, and so that's questionable. Notwithstanding that, I'll take this on surface on face value because on it, it 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 essentially confirms what I told you has to happen. To, if you're going to use a blockchain, you you have to have a couple of these elements. What does it say? Go on to say about this project. The reports about this IMMO project first service first service in local cryptocurrency industry last week just now happening just bleeding out. While all information is based on rumors and leaked information, the crypto society has said it can be a digital token backed by natural resources like gold or somehow related to real estate. So, who am I to say, folks? The Rothschilds are investing their time and energy in an opaque, a private project which values its token by production or land, real estate. Who am I to, who am I to 
who am I to say against that dynasty? Is what I told you needs to be done the beginning, the 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 base, the rudiments of how to do this? Is what the dynasty he he would say doesn't have any effect is doing? They are privatizing even their own stuff against the debt system, and they're based in land and production. Folks, I keep telling you this land disposal law, you have to understand it. It does something. And it's partly why the control of it is so darn important and in international law and, and what the arrogance, the hubris of the uh, Zionistas over there in uh, Palestine are saying, well, we got the land, what are you going to do about it? Well, there's an international order that may do something. I'm hoping it happens at some point, maybe not in my lifetime. But somehow that that gets righted. Now, we're not going to do it being crickets, but this protection regards this asset and wealth is based in land. Why it's so important. My point on this is the Rothschild uh, empire is interested in a particular type of blockchain technology. And it had two qualities. One, it's private, opaque. I review, I, I interpret as private. Absolutely closed door private. And number two is it's based in something of wealth or, if you will, resource. Something that continues to hold value. Now, let's go outside in the world and see what just happened recently. Didn't Venezuela just do that? Didn't they base their, their Pedro, whatever their, 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 their new crypto, blockchain technology currency is on their oil now why well because if something fails you can go grab the oil and you can use the oil because it has an alternative value like gold is usable in some regard although less if you will on a consumptive level like silver is much more usable than gold uh, but it's price is less, so there's not, it doesn't make any sense there somehow, but notwithstanding that, there's utility in a, if I can say commodity, in a product or the land. You can do something to retain value, tangible value. There's a way to continue a value, a real value, that doesn't exist when your electrons get shut off. That doesn't exist when you're based on derivative contracts that a few few criminals agree, uh, so, you know, white collar criminals agree is is currency. Rothschilds are investing time and energy in an opaque blockchain project that's going to base itself in wealth. They are not basing it in something that's based in debt in public or accessible by public, which is government, like the IRS. When I say opaque and private, that those of you that have known to discern what I'm saying here in private, it kicks you even to another level beyond. It's not just you private. There's a whole establishment of and construction for that privacy. Whether you understand whether it is at all or not, or that whether I understand is irrelevant. It's there to do, and these people do it. They know to do it. Is your guide. And my word to you, my just in a word, my discussion to you on those of you that are paying attention, pay attention to this. It, it's just out now. Those that are in the, in the hub of decision of the world on everything that's debt are not investing in that debt for their own private enterprises. They're in, they've created their own or looking to invest into See, they don't even do it themselves. They're looking, they take from the brains of somebody else to do what they need to do, and they're not looking public, and they're not looking in the debt system to do that. Is a clue for those of you that are into the crypto, into the blockchain, really, and want to think that you're moving down the road more than just a hobby or more than just a, um, a, a, a what's it called, the uh, wager, the game, the speculation, and you want to do something for people, uh, in the future, in the liberty side of this, that's a. I can use the word liberty in that because that's a constructed, uh, constructed um, infrastructure, constructed environment that you have to participate with, 
or you're outside it. So you, that's a inside that there's rules, and that's the liberty. It's the extent of that of those the those rules. Even the even the structure of it has its own limitation. The physicality has a restriction. So that's a liberty. So when we get into understanding these words, I don't I, I, though I would not allow liberty and undefined for myself, and I try not to speak about it too much. Once you define it and that's the agreeable, then I have no problem with that. It's kind of like the word person. The word person, I don't have a problem with the word person, but I won't talk about it in general. You, you hardly ever hear me talk about it. You ever hardly you ever hear the use the word. Because it has a very particular thing it's doing. A particular thing that's going on there. And until we define that that thing is going on, I have no need to use the word person. It's a legalism. But it doesn't mean it's not useful. Once we can define that, and it's confined to that definition or that context, that framework, I can I can use it freely. But most people have an uh, um, unawareness of its use and utility, and where and how, and the extents. And so I prefer not to use those words because they cause confusion. It's like dealing in, in grants. Uh, they're a civil creation. So they're considered a, a privilege and an immunity within the context of an inalienable right, not an unalienable right. They're within the context of a construct. And I'm asking people to listen to the subtleties of what I'm saying because I'm talking in those areas. I'm talking, well, you're either in there or you're not, or when I use this word, I mean it in this context. It's not all perfect. I don't talk in total accuracy, but I talk in, 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 in specifics enough that we should be able to hear the distinctions. But getting back over to the blockchain, the, those that are wanting to use it, and Russia would not address Venezuela, notwithstanding the asset, until they had a discussion. And once it was worked out what the reality of the Venezuelan currency, or the uh, bit. Crypto so called currency was going to be doing, and the rate contract arrangements that they w- could utilize this medium or indicator of, of value. Then Russia agreed to use the Venezuelan digital currency. You're watching how it works, folks. Between the two is a private contract. You're just utilizing this thing, this fiat thing. It's not fiat at the point it passes. It's just the, the tool of passing value, accounting for value. And it has a and this has a in this case has a way, apparently, for any if you will call default of value in the medium to be restored by something in the world of value. And now we have the medium of convenience here in the crypto blockchain that's private between the parties agreeing to it not public to look in from the government to tax and regulate and all this other nonsense and diminish and debase and whatever all they're going to do as a debt-based system the extortion system so this 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 question was interesting why ask that question at all Why is it not relevant? Why is there a dismissal of the Rothschilds? And then why isn't there a highlighting, even though they talk about it, why isn't there the highlighting of the points of what the Rothschilds are interested in when they did look at blockchain? They did not look at Ethereum, or at least on the surface, although the technology of contract, again, to me, contracts in in a ledger are no big deal. I don't see how this is a big deal attached to a value chain that has, these are just parallelisms to me I don't see what the big deal about all this is really it's how it gets contorted and adulterated for the use of someone else that you aren't in control of is I guess more my point that the people in the know of the world as we are understanding things about the term utilizing the name Rothschild watch where the successful people go is another as another simple plan. They are not going to the public blockchain. They're privatizing one. And it's not based in debt or something that's going to be attached by a bigger system, a bigger bully to debt. They're going to go to wealth. And let me just address something else at that point. Remember, the Fed, 
when it accounts for gold and silver coin, accounts not on the debt on their ledger as a debt or a, a negotiable instrument in the debt system. It it has to uh, put it on the ledger of the asset, the wealth. It's not in the debt system. This substance, this stuff of the land. It's it's why I keep talking to you about understanding the law of your land, not not, not the constitution. The land itself, how you get it, how you hold it, what keeps others at bay in law, not the, what we're seeing as the destruction of law like we see exampled by the Zionistas over a people that are native to their land. If the Indians in the United States of America weren't any example to us as well. But as Russell Means said, folks, <laughs> all y'all in, uh, in the United States of America, welcome to the reservation is your truth. You are supposed to stop it, and you still, I think, have time to do that. And you certainly have the responsibility, unless you are a uh, defeated, conquered people, and then I certainly don't want to hear about your your complaint anymore about it. Just stop. Why do you waste your time? Why do I see a, a concept, statement, countering the problem if you're not going to step up to stop a bit of it? I, I don't get it. You're a conquered people. Admit to it. Stop complaining. Stop wanting to go. Be a conquered people and go live your life in peace. But I, don't, I really don't need to hear the noise about all the all the woe and the whining that we all have. And like I said, I get this off this broadcast. I do post-production. About midnight, I'm all done posting everywhere, whatever we're doing. Uh, I then go to uh, a couple of hours later, I finally get to the bed. I wake up in the morning. I get back to job, job one, which is to a focused attack on, on the oppressors that are working against, uh, whether it's me or, or someone uh, close to me or someone that comes to me that... Uh, will take on their own project responsibility and take guidance. It's, it's and we get to we we have not get to we have to do that uh, if there if any but one of us is going to succeed. So they ask, is Rothschild involved? Well, no, Roth, Rothschilds want nothing to do with the Bitcoin outwardly, uh, a, 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 anything public and anything in debt. They're going to privatize it in wealth is a clue to you. So I don't care if whether the Rothschilds are going to be uh, influential or not uh, is, a mis, is a misstatement, is a misquestion, because, again, Bitcoin is an infinitesimal part of what the Rothschilds actually have institutions in place to, to funnel. Even if they're not controlling it, they get a piece of the action, folks. Way more in a day than you could ever think about in your life. Way, I mean, beyond, 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 beyond. Way more than anything Bitcoin would ever will ever do. Well, at this point, well, I think Bitcoin's going to do the public thing, but it won't be what the private people, the, the the people of knowledge, are using. They're going private. They're going to wealth. Then Venezuela went private, and it went to wealth. And then another nation recognized that and did a private deal between them, notwithstanding the sanctions of the biggest bully in the world. If you understand how that all worked, then why? Again, why? So let me get back. One more thing I wanted to uh, mention. And I made a statement last week, and I just wanted to see if anybody would kind of comment when I did it. I'd kind of have, have to comment out. I, I said, based on this, uh, going over to the, the, the blockchain and that uh, your social credit now is, is, your, is like a merit system, uh, in, in, and we talked about that last week in China. I said, how many people do you know that have, uh, have, have judgments against you that the government... Uh, wants to use blockchain to uh, d diminish your social credit to get you to ex to impose upon you to embarrass you and shame you into paying your debts to a judgment and I, I kind of threw that out there I wanted to see if there's any response but I also want to get back to it today what is actually the biggest problem in the government about judgments in court not the people amongst themselves. That was what I was talking about last week. I don't know of many people at all that have those kinds of judgments. But what's the government actually worried about in getting people to pay their judgments? Isn't it just the government's imposition through their so-called justice systems, their judicial systems, in extorting from you their judgments? That this social credit system tool using blockchain and other technologies, whatever they want to call all of them, face recognition, to do so, isn't it really just another enforcement tool for the government plunder? 
And so in that regard, we all should have said, well, I know lots of people that are beholden to the government, the traffic tickets or taxes, or property taxes, fees, fines, taxes, and other punishments and penalties, application costs. The government holds a lot of that servitude, doesn't it? And so I kind of did a, a little bit of a trick statement last week. I didn't hear nobody contact, uh, comment on it. Uh, maybe some of you thought it. Maybe it was too small a thing to comment on. But I know a lot of people that owe the government money, the government, on its plunder system. That when you attach this to China, what they're doing, and then you reflect it back over to the United States and every other government in the future, utilizing this technology on your social credit and whether or not they'll decide to pull the plug on you, let you go somewhere or not, will be on whether or not you keep current with the government exactions of every kind. I'm saying that specific to the United States. You don't think this 42 U.S.C. 1981 is going to come up and bite you on your uh, hinder parts. You're missing the big point I've been talking to you about. This is what I also mentioned, broached to you last week. You're either going to be someone that's in the prison system or the middle class sucking sound system. You're going to be being pulled. The, the human resource that you are is going to be pulled. You're either going to get your time into the system of privatized prisons and you'll be working for 25 cents an hour, or you're going to be the one barely making it out there in the, in, the, in the real world under shared prosperity, and you're going to be fined and feed, and you're going to come out and pay it just so that you can go out, and you can go without question go to the park just to see the trees. Your social credit system, the judgments they're talking about collecting, are to the, the plundering government that'll be putting more and more and more on you to pay. Uh, you did I you know I don't know what to say I'm trying to tell you and I held something back wanted to see if anybody would comment on it they're setting this up against you all the Chinese example is exactly what they're doing they didn't tell you what judgments they want to collect on it's government judgments under the color of justice which most all you all can complain about but wouldn't have the couldn't actually show more than an opinion about it how the injustice manifests and ex executes itself and I'm saying that from a little bit of experiential authority on the parts I've uncovered I don't mean opinion I mean understanding how the beast runs by habit and interfering with that habit to expose it and also to to assert a remedy against a harm that at this point, because most of us are crickets, will take a lot longer to enforce. The government social credit system on the blockchain, whatever they call it, U.S. of Bitcoin is going to be this system that's going to ramp up the plunder as they do now that people seem to believe is uh, not a plan, your traffic tickets are probably the most obvious thing. You don't seem to feel it so much because I think there's a somehow, uh, even the cops get guilty. So they just kind of pick on everybody as an intern. And it takes a few years of time before they get through the population, hitting, dinging a couple people every day. They finally get back around to you in about four or five years. Down, you get another ticket. And if you really tick somebody off, and then they'll hit you three or four right in a row. They'll, they'll cause you to submit. Well, all that money, you're either going to pay, cough it up out of your endeavors every, every day, and you're coming and you're going from what you need. You're going to cough it up, or they're going to stick you on this system, and pretty soon you won't be able to travel. You won't be able to use your car. You won't be able to, get, uh, you won't be able to go on the Amtrak. You won't be able to get on the bus. You'll be confined to the, to the walkways. And if you think that's outlandish in science fiction, you're not paying attention. They're doing it in China. They're doing it with Ethereum. They're doing it with the Bitcoin. They're doing it in the blockchain is really what the point is. And they're taking all this big data and they're funneling it to, to, to their cause to be the 
to be able to better extort from you. It's what I keep repeating to you, the 42 U.S.C. 1981, your equal rights, I don't care what you think your color is, what your race is, what your class is, you are going to be the subject class. And your civil rights, right in law, 42 U.S.C. 1981, is to pay, you shall pay exactions of every kind. In, to include things such as fines, fees, payments, punishment, penalties. And everyone's been in la-la land about this, not watching this train coming down the track. In these things called uh, phones, portable phones, concentrated e that the governments are putting a system, a cage around you like you don't even have a clue about. And you'll complain about it. Well, you'll embrace part of the technology. You'll actually embrace the, 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 the put the, the chain around your neck, thinking it's cool. Well, it looks pretty. It's a golden chain. It looks cool. You're doing it all to yourself, not listening to someone like myself. And if you are listening, you're seeing the impending doom. You either, some of you will do something. Most of you will just complain about, yeah, we see it. Yep, he's right. It's right there. Yeah, those bastages. Those farging bastages, as Roman Moroni said. That, that, that movie cracked me up. Yeah, you'll say that, but we won't do a thing against the obvious. The people in money and control are doing what I said you need to do regarding the, the new technology, and they're keeping it completely out of the hands of, of public, whatever that might be. It's private, absolutely private. The governments are going completely private to absorb all of you all into this sort of meritocracy of loyalty. And the judgments that I asked you, do you how many people do you know that owe judgment? Well, not many, I said. I'm thinking... You to me, I don't sue you. How many people do I sue me that I, that I owe money to, that I sue, that they owe money to me? I don't know of that many people. I sure know thousands, tens of thousands, millions of people that owe the government something or they've paid them. And this system, you don't pay them, you're going to lose your right to move about the country. Southwest Airlines is going to have to change its title, its, its, its statement. You're free to move about the country. Let me look at your social credit first. Oh, you didn't pay your property taxes quite soon enough. If they haven't already gotten your bank account and stolen it from you, and now you're sitting on the street because you couldn't pay your rent. Now, what are you doing out here, homeless one? That's against the law. And you feeding him? No, you're going too. Social credit demerit. Pay us. You don't think this is happening, you're missing the whole thing. I, I'm actually mind boggled to actually watch this. And then I see the crickets and it really does something inside to me. I don't even know what. I almost have I just literally I don't even have to let I can't let it attach to me. I just step back behind it and say, Wow, we're really messed up. We're really messed up. We're watching this thing, this train freight train a coming, and we're standing on the track looking to see if we can read the number on the front. You are going to get permission through all this technology or not. And one of the biggest, and we see the highest level, we think authorities and constitutions and all this, and we think there's law in this world, and we think that people who take oaths of office to honor it are honoring it. And you think you're going to do something in the future, and you think your rights are so powerful, and the under, well, number one right, if we, all, if we have the second, the, the most important right is the right to free speech, and the second most important right is the right to own a gun. Really? That's not going to be a social credit of yours when you get into that system. And we're seeing evidence of this happening. Your social credit, you can only get do so much against governments that would otherwise profess to give you to honor these things in people because it's the government's supposed to represent the people themselves and each one of you good folk and we get the social credit extension and the denial is already being played out I don't need a computer and a phone and a cryptocurrency we're watching the mechanisms of the government agreeing to the occupation over your life 
everywhere. And we see it again, as I talked about a little bit uh, about it before, in this, this whatever, you, whatever you think about him, or not, uh, this thing with the Julian Assange and them locking him down so that he cannot be the journalist or publicist on information to you. It's, to me, just an extension of what the social credit's going to be in the future. But you see it physically working out. I, I have to say, you, on the principle of this, you can't look away and you can't be silent. It's happening locally, so just find some place local that the same similar thing. But this is the pinnacle that we get to see. This is the, the highest pinnacle of the example. Ecuador will respect Assange's asylum right if... Did you, did you already hear the, the conundrum? Ecuador will respect Assange's asylum right if... Can't be much of a right. If... He obeys. No politics condition. In other words, his asylum right is precarious. It's on the tipping point. If he agrees to not be a journalist or a publicist. Would you think about that for just a little bit in the context of what I'm saying about your social credit and whether or not you're going to get to do something or not in law and all this other thing? And your actual rights are to pay extortions of every kind. And when you look at the word exactions, it means not just extortion, but wrongful extortion. That's your rights, folks, if you just pay attention for just a little bit. Why you're yakking and complaining about minor things beyond, I mean, everyday little things, I really don't understand either. They're walking you right into, I, I don't even know if 1984 is a good model. Ecuador will respect Assange's asylum right if he obeys. Is the working out of your government, uh, people in government, uh, violation. The ocu these occupiers inside your what you thought was lawful government. You can be crickets, you can turn the knob, you can say, oh, Assange is a jerk, whatever you, whatever you want whatever you want to say. Look at the principle underlying it. You know, you know my, I have a, I'm not, not so certain on these guys, uh, these guys that always make the news. I've already talked about it. I don't have to do. The principle is this point. A government that, who's Ecuador, the president of the government of Ecuador, uh, the constitution of which says you have the right to free speech and, and you have the right to a, to asylum, and you have you have the, the no authority in the government to out or interfere with any of that is being violated in this guy named uh, Lenin Moreno. I think Kim.com said it was Morano. And then I asked, is that a new breakfast cereal? Call them Moranos. Like when Venezuela seized the Kellogg cereal factory. Uh, and, and Maduro did it. I said, "Are they going? Is he now going to make new cereal? It must be a. It must be the thing to do by uh, to presidents and uh, of countries. Make your own breakfast cereals. He's going to make the Maduros. So Moranos are their next breakfast cereal, apparently, because he becomes in the power to say so. The Constitution says otherwise. This guy's going to condition a journalist's rights of asylum." If he speaks about politics, which if you look underneath the right of free speech is really one of the pinnacle reasons for the speech is the political speech. I don't know if you all knew that. That's really almost the focus of why the right exists so that you can speak out politically without being killed more than likely. Oppressed, controlled, put away, caged, whatever you want to say. It was about the political statement. Why? You see how powerful it is. When a, a legislator is in the legislation in the legislature, he is immune from what he says inside that, that body. Free speech of political matters. It might be law, but that's policy. Forget forget all those connections, you're not paying attention. The legislator is immune on whatever he says on the on the legislature's floor, if you will. That's how, that's the political nature of the right. From all knowledge about it. 
And this guy in Ecuador is going to condition that, allow a right of asylum that's held in the Constitution to be inviolate if someone obeys, is your social credit of the future through your blockchain technology as being developed. Another guy that they're doing, uh, now in UK, as we heard last week was the worst, is this guy named Toby Robinson. Uh, we came away last week with the guy being in jail, this and that. Some more stories came out uh, about this. That's another really obscure uh, story that's all obscured. A lot of hard-to-find information. I probably spent way too long trying to figure this guy out, figure out his condition, figure out what's going on, than I should have. But, in fact, at the time he was uh, violated by a judge, he was in a public area doing journalism. And the, the judge appears to have witnessed that. In UK, that's illegal. He can't witness and sentence. He was charged for, at the point of the so-called, of the journalism in the public square, not in the court, but outside, he was charged with, um, excuse me, it just slipped my mind, uh, uh, you call it disturbance, a public disturbance. When it got into court, they couldn't get him for public disturbance because of what he was doing, the judge who witnessed what he's doing called it contempt of court on his prior uh, consented to guilty plea on a hearing that was on a, a sentence that was suspended how contorted this starts to become that what they've done is they've attacked another journalist utilized a hook that ha they had in him before contorted what he actually did to wrongly apply a contempt which the judge is in control over uh, so what's the lesson what I tell you, you don't do anything or you avoid at all costs anything that gives the authority a right of decision. But I talk about all the time. But this Tommy Robinson condition is so convoluted and it's been made so, I think it's so, and it's being used to stifle the journalist in Tommy Robinson, notwithstanding what he's done before. He's got a whole story around him. It's so so much, like I said, I think I might have spent too much time. I don't want to spend more time here than to tell you there's so much. Un they've now got it now to the point that the system is so questionable, even though it holds all the authority in the decision, that de they are now again allowing the, the government is now in control when you do this stuff. If they can go after two journalists for speaking out on a right, they have two rights in a way. They have the right of free expression. They also have, in the United States anyway, the right of the press. Both of them are destroyed by a civil side uh, insult to the judge, who really shouldn't even be there in the first place. In other words, it didn't actually have a crime, but they brought him into the system and converted it into an insult to the judge based on a prior agreement that he had made, totally different than what, what, he's, what his actions were on in front of the court and so I don't like I said I spent a lot of time going through this there's I got some links uh, hopefully it'll it'll give you some insight uh, people are explaining there's some problems with this case and you really have to look at this case and really parse it out very carefully what you're gonna find though is a government a judge who is utilizing a wrongly imposed charge to give him the authority to impose his private insult and control this journalist is put into an AI program in the future and put into your social credit uh, algorithm is what I see here evidence of it uh, a gentleman named Bruce Boyer talks about the Tommy Robinson affair he uh, I found it interesting is one of the things he'll go through and he'll lay this out a little bit clear here's why it's important to lay this out clearly you need to be able to put what Tommy Robinson did and what he was a subject to and what he against what they, he did and what they blamed him for and then the corruption the state will do because I want you to do, be able to start seeing the analysis of the of the migration of a problem into a place the government can justify its actions uh, for the most part up until now nobody actually challenges against properly which is what I try to show you to do all the time. So this has become a sordid affair. My point, again, is this is the government's AI out in practice. It'll be reduced to some algorithm for your social credit in the future. And they're targeting people with the two, if I can say it, two rights, uh, free speech and freedom of the press. 
And if you think your little feeble understanding of I have the right to speak anywhere is anything, you're nuts, and you're not going to be lasting long. Well, you're going to you're going to like walking a lot of places and and looking for grubs in the, in the forest if you can get into the ble- into the king's forest uh, to eat because they're going to you're going to be one of those uh, examples of what we shouldn't do. Kind of how I expose the common law court nonsense stuff when there's so many other answers around. And why and not putting yourself in jeopardy. Stay ahead of this one. Uh, I guess take so there's quite a I have a few links not a lot maybe four or five to the Tommy Robinson thing I think this is a good um, review of of how you can be how you're brought into the system on something that eh, he agreed to the guilt on his prior charge I can't argue with that with his consent to that but then how they adjust that how the system takes advantage and you, I think people need to see how that gets done so that you understand how it gets done so either you avoid it in the first instance or can address it directly if it does happen to you. And as I look up, I see the charge against Robinson declared by the police at the time of the arrest was breach of peace, was changed to contempt of court. And the judge who witnesses this, who has no right to do that, is the one who made the change in order to gain the hold. And so this adulteration, this hidden thing, is what you need to understand is the one of the one of the realities in the system, and why what I see has been a defeat for a lot of people, and they didn't understand it. And so then we rail a bit, you know, we get our so-called patriot hat on, and oh, we start stomping around the Constitution, not realizing these are a bunch of criminals occupying your your government. These are not the the people honoring the government, honoring the the, the, the oath, if you will. And it's not your opinion of the oath. They're not even honoring the, the, the most basic um, uh, interpretation. Like, like a judge who's a victim witnessing a crime can't be the one who determines the sentence. I mean, come on. I don't need a whole lot of law to say that there's something wrong there. We've got a conflict of interest, don't we? But see, conflict of interest in reflexive law, so-called, doesn't exist. It's whoever's in the seat of decision has the right to make a decision. Under contempt of court, that judge is all-powerful. Literally, all-powerful. Uh, you get, It takes a bunch to overthrow that. It can be done, but, I mean, it takes your knowledge of that, too. And it would take a group of people to help uh, someone like Tommy out. I'm not exonerating anything that he's done before. He agreed that he did wrong. That's up to him. But how this system will take you your stuff. Like, again, well, I'm not doing anything wrong. Well, in effect, he wasn't either. And look what happened to him. Oh, my digital world is wide open. I can tell anybody anything. Okay. Understand what's the train that's coming down upon us. I hear a train of coming, folks. Now, are you going to be standing on the tracks when it comes through? Or are you going to just be stepping away from it? Or, or, are you going to realize that train represents total occupation and corruption and maybe go pull some pins out of its rail to prepare it for what it needs to be doing. Am I saying destroy the system? No, I'm saying you find the you find the what it needs to the gives it life and you pull those pins. You 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 find the things inside the structure that they are relying on and the color and you show that's not valid and you give it, you pull its authority, you expose them for the felon that they are. And then you have a whole lot of people watching because the system won't repair itself. Why? Because these occupiers are in the system and rely on the mass overthrow of it. I, I don't know what else to say. This is just a rule of man. Over time, forever. And our preference to want to be living in peace today, what we think it is, what we've been bolstered up to believe in the fluffy nest they gave us, isn't going to change that fact of reality. I'm pausing. You might think, oh, no, we can do so. oh, we, we, we can change. My, I'm going to dig my heels in. Yeah, go ahead. Dig your heels in. You're standing in the middle of the rails of a train coming down. Dig your heels in. Tell me how, well, you're not going to be able to tell me how that works for you, are you? But I can predict the future, and so can you. 
So you're either somebody committing suicide or you're, blue, or you're oblivious. I mean, come on. It, it's not... Anyway. So, this is what I see. This is my frustration. This is what I see people. I see the argument and the discussion and the yak-yak and all this other stuff. I don't see... I don't see a better answer. I don't see a better resolve. I don't see a, a responsibility. And it's ours. It's been imposed upon us, and that's something we can't change. And we can't live in our fantasy world to stop it. They don't care about your fantasy world. They are a train of coming. If you didn't realize you're standing on the tracks they built, I think you missed another clue. So what's going on in UK? UK, we keep we said years and years ago. What happens in UK a couple of years ago? It, it hits the United States. Well, then it got down to like almost three to four, six months. Whatever happened in the UK happened here. Well, uh, in the United States, of America. Then I see this. What other adulterations are going on? What others? What else is going on that the legal system allows and the people just sit there and don't know what to do with? Exclusive of the Telegraph, gene edited super crops to be grown in the UK for the first time. Of of many adulteries, another one, and then we see the and consider the Brexit problem here too as well. Now I, I think Brexit was a good idea, but it was the Queen needed it. All this other there's other reason why it had to go that way. It would be good for her, but it's also good for the people. But they have to take control. Uh, no one not go down that analysis. But uh, now in the UK, if they do Brexit, they're going to be split from the EU anyway. So they get to have gene edited super crops. So what technology are they using? What loophole is it talk about here in the legal system? But the fact that the the affiction that says that because we don't know of any harm, this CRISPR-Cas9 system, we can make it look like we're nothing more than a natural hybrid. We're not bringing in any other foreign material. It's just the material of the same plant readjusted. Is the so-called loophole to get around so-called gene modifi- modified organisms is an adulteration a corruption that is invading now it's going to be going to uh, UK, they're telegraphing it for the United States, on the telegraph here they're not doing it, but the telegraph is reporting this of this loophole where they're using, the. I told you about this CRISPR-Cas9, they'll use it as if it's not modifying, and now they don't in this, the United States, they already say you don't have to, it's not gene modified if you do that, that's what the rule is, because why? a bunch of you didn't go down when they had that rule making session, and make a comment and expose the real fact of it all and get yourself in line to go after that problem, and so you are going to be subject to those that did how's that? for an occupation. See, I mean, Je- was it Jefferson sa- told us, the vigilant active masses, if we're not ma- vigilant and active, uh, those that are, win. And it's lawful. Not legal, it's lawful. You have to understand the, the, that shifts there. Because you're no longer in it. So, if we want to continue to hear, have the harm come upon us, and my problem isn't the GMO, it's, again, as I keep saying, the blindness, the, per, per, the persistent and, and intended blindness in not looking at, a, if not all, the majority of consequences of interfering with the, the genetics to begin with in a ex- intrusive way as the technology has been providing. It's not simply just re-zipping, reorganizing, removing certain things. The imposition of the technology in the DNA causes the cell to respond. It's a natural thing. You want to talk about where life starts? It's in there. It's actually got defenses. We hear, we heard it last week, no tests have been made on some of, on these things. All this stuff goes on, and no one really looked at the basics of how the system really works. Well, we know a lot today, but we certainly don't even we don't even have a clue. Somehow, it's like almost like the inner space of the ocean. We know so little. We know more about outer space than we uh, know about inner space. Still, forty years after I wanted to become an oceanographer, it's a, the story hasn't changed. So, 
where are we going to go? Are we going to let these people tell us what life is? Uh, or are we going to tell them that they don't have that right and we're going to bring our meaningful, non-opinionated, but meaningful, factual reason why they shan't? That's up to us. That's the way the system has been made. So UK is going to do a so-called loophole. They think that CRISPR-Cas9, because it doesn't change, uh, add any foreign material, that's not going to be GMO. Again, the attorneys have figured out uh, how to get at you. Now, the attorneys wouldn't go so far as to get at you at what they call your curtilage at your house, notwithstanding the car. There's not going to be an adulteration, at least now, for a problem jumping into the United States. Uh, how you know we get run down by this legal system? There's still things that work. You got to look and see does what works and how they got there. Uh, what the sentiment is that the occupier doesn't want to invoke to get you ticked off, so you go do something effective finally. Uh, Fourth Amendment victory, eight to one. Supreme Court rules: Police need a warrant to search vehicle on private property refused to extend the automobile exception so and this is from what really happened dot com and I uh, haven't seen or heard from him for a long time but uh, not that I get out much but uh, so here the the, the, uh, bar members of the Supreme Court or those that were prior bar members won't allow uh, an invasion of your cartilage and that's a funny word too but it, it does start to tie to the right of your land in your most private area. Again, keeping things private. Uh, they did not extend the automobile exception to the Fourth. Did you ever see an automobile exception to the Fourth Amendment? No. But this is the thing they invented. Because all of a sudden the car on the public street somehow has this magical per, uh, per, uh, lack of impervity to privacy. When if I look at it, that's not gone when you got out in the public because that's really your private use of a granted right that the government was supposed to help exclusive to you. And so the attorneys won't start to describe it this way, and so you lose all of that. But when it got onto your private property, and this to me is a big deal because when you tie that into your land patent, I may even be able to push the curtilage question back to the street not your most private areas of expectation of privacy, but your entire border is expected, that when a car, an automobile, they claim here, is on private property, the cops have to get a warrant. Is is not an adulteration of what we thought was going on relative to rights and privacy regarded land property rights. Not the goods of the automobile protected, but because they're on the land think about that as I keep talking to you about this land disposal law. Anyway, thank you uh, for uh, tuning in today. I hope something I said inspires you to continue looking. Uh, pick on a, pick up a, a, t- a problem, a wrong you want to make right. Work it through. Understand the battlefield. Don't let anybody uh, persuade you away against that. We need all hands on deck. If you have there's a ship of state, we need to there. If you're not, you're in the water with the sharks. It's pretty simple. You only got two places here. Uh, then you're going to have a mutiny. The mutiny's happened. So someone's got the tiller of that ship of state, and it's going to run us into some uh, foreign land, or it's going to run us into that titan- that, that iceberg, uh, because, the, again, the sharks are waiting. It doesn't matter. Uh, but anyway, thank you again, Grimner, uh, for what you do at RealLibertyMedia.com. Folks, remember to tune in. Real Liberty Media next week. Uh, otherwise, uh, you see why here. Ozzy Skateboard, and you're listening to UCY.TV.